In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an airplane drop problem where a plane is flying at 80 meters per second, 1,000 meters above the ground, and as it drops an object, it's going to follow this curve path where it hits the ground, and we're going to find its landing position based on solving its delta x value. So anytime you're solving a projectile motion 2D problem, we want to set up an x and y column. An x column is anything that's moving horizontally and the Y column is anything that's moving vertically. And the reason we do that is because they are, they are different types of motion. In the Y column, um, the motion is accelerated because there is a force, which is a force of gravity acting vertically. And then in the horizontal direction, it's moving at a constant velocity because there are no forces acting side to side once the object is released, assuming that we're ignoring air resistance. Now, if we take a look at this problem, we're going to go ahead and write down all our known values. Now, a couple of them are posted on the screen, but then a couple of them you'll have to know conceptually. So we have the 80 meters per second, which is clearly a horizontal value. So we're going to put the velocity of 80 meters per second in our X column. And then our 1000 meters is going to be a vertical value. So our delta Y is going to be negative 1000 because our package is falling 1,000 meters, so its displacement is negative 1,000 meters. Now, a couple other things we can add in this column are the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the tricky one that people tend to forget sometimes is the initial velocity of zero meters per second. And that's because there isn't any vertical velocity moving upwards or downwards when the package is dropped. It's just carrying a horizontal velocity of 80 meters per second because it was riding on the plane. So there is no vertical velocity there. Now, it looks like we have a lot more to work with on the Y side, which we definitely do. And then we wanna use that information to eventually solve for a delta X on this side. Now on the left-hand side, we only have one formula we can use which is delta x over t equals v, and we already have the velocity, so we're already good there. We just need to find the time, and then once we find the time, we could do one step of algebra and then solve for our delta x, our final landing position. So on this side over here, we have our three values, so we're only gonna wanna use accelerated motion formula, so we will not use this on the right side, only on the left side. So based on the values we have, we are gonna use the formula delta y equals v i t plus one half a t squared. And then because of this zero being plugged in here, we can go ahead and cancel out this first part because it's all gonna go to zero anyways. So let's go ahead and plug in the values we have and then solve for our time. So I got a time of 14.29 seconds. All I did is set the delta y equal to 1 half at squared. 1 half times negative 9.8 is negative 4.9. So I divided both sides by negative 4.9 and took the square root of both sides, which gave me our time of 14.29 seconds, which could be used over here. So we have a delta x value that we're looking for. We have a time of 14. 0.29 seconds and that equals 80 meters per second. So if I go ahead and cross multiply the 14.29 over to this side, then that gives me our delta X, which equals 1,143.2 meters. And that is our final answer of where our package is gonna land. Now there are variations of this problem, such as um, being given the delta X and then solving for the speed that the plane is flying, which is the initial velocity of the package in the horizontal direction. In that case, it's not going to be very different than the version I just showed you. The only difference would be you are um, given the delta x. You would solve for the t on the vertical side, such as I did here. 
with the delta y, the a, and the vi. And then once you have the delta x and the t, you would just divide those two, and then that would give you the velocity, which would be the initial velocity of the package, which is also the initial velocity of the plane. So if you're given that variation, it's going to be a very similar setup and calculation, just one little difference at the very end. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand and set up an airplane drop problem. Thank you for watching and listening.